think the world's falling apart out there. Do you feel that way? Did you watch the flag burning thing? Wasn't that great? Boy, if everyone showed their true colors then, didn't they? Retarded nation that we are. People acted as though the Supreme Court approved the flag burning. You know what I mean? Does that mean we have to burn our flags? What did they say that we have to... No, no, no! It's not what they said. They said that perhaps if somebody wants to burn a flag, he perhaps doesn't need to go to jail for a year. Pretty harsh on their parts, huh? People snapped over this. Did you watch that? They were just, hey buddy, let me tell you something. My daddy died for that flag. This is really? Wow, I bought mine. <laughs> yeah, they sell them, you know, at Kmart shit. Yeah. Yeah, he died in the Korean War for that flag. Oh, what a coincidence. Mine was made in Korea. Wow, the world is that big. No one, and I repeat, no one has ever died for a flag. A flag is a piece of cloth. They might have died for freedom, which, by the way, is the freedom also to burn the fucking flag. Say, burning the flag doesn't make freedom go away. It's kind of like freedom. And an addendum. When uh, you see those stickers out that say, stand for the flag, kneel for the cross. But the cross has an American flag on it. What the fuck am I supposed to do? Religion and patriotism continue to be cancers uh, in this world. Uh, the extremists of both are not making the world a better place for the people that they claim to be doing so for the freedom and the sort of religious acceptance of everybody but they don't actually listen to and follow those things and uh both of them are frankly useless to me welcome to broke on records this is modern hardcore essentials part three take two um i've been threatening to do this video for <laughs> forever since modern hardcore essentials part two whenever that uh video was uh if you haven't seen the first two videos i would encourage you to go do so and then come back and watch this one or watch them after whatever but essentially what i'm talking about is uh hardcore music hardcore punk specifically one of my favorite of all the genres and i started doing these videos where i was talking about modern hardcore essentials uh basically albums released in the last 23 to 24 years or so anything after the year including and after the year 2000 um and yeah so now this is part three i initially was going in alphabetical order but since the last video, uh, I've picked up some other things in the first half of the alphabet and forgot some things in the first half of the alphabet that I wanted to show. So now we are here. So I'm going to finally wrap up this series. Uh, and then maybe later down the line, I really want to do a 90s Hardcore Essentials. I've actually, unfortunately, sold a couple of my 90s Hardcore Essentials. So, I, I mean, I still have plenty to talk about, but... Uh, like, I don't have Master Killer anymore, I don't have Unorthodox anymore, um, don't have, uh, Rain and Endless Fall anymore, so. This is what it is. Um, but here we go, I'm gonna talk about ten more modern hardcore essentials, the ones I do have. Starting off with a juggernaut of a record and a band. This is Bane, this is Give Blood, uh, Boston Band, this is their second full-length LP, uh, Bane is kind of in the lane of like terror and trapped under ice just uh this band that kind of start they started in the late 90s but most of their material was released in the 2000s uh and they are just a cornerstone band to the genre extremely influential um a lot of bands in the last you know 20 to 25 years or so have certainly taken a lot of inspiration from Bane uh it they are kind of just a straightforward hardcore band, but they do what they do so well. There's a little bit of melodic riffage in what they do. Aaron Bernard is a very distinct hardcore yelp uh, that makes this record fantastic. This is probably my personal second favorite. Uh, I really love The Note, which is the record that came after this. That's the one I listen to the most. But I, while there's a case to be made for all four of their albums, 
that uh, could be anyone's favorite. I think Give Blood is kind of uh, uh, the agreed upon uh, catalog classic and genre staple from Bane. So if you are maybe new to hardcore music and you haven't listened to this album or you were a fan of hardcore music in the 80s and 90s and did not keep up with what was going on, uh, give, give, give blood a listen because it is amazing. Uh, next up, I have End of a Year, You Are Beneath Me, uh, End of a Year. May sound familiar to you if you've been watching my channel for a very, very long time, uh, because they are the band that is now Self-Defense Family. Um, many of the members who are in End of a Year still play in some of the Self-Defense Family lineups. They've got a very large cast of people that have been in <laughs> both groups. Um, but yeah, this was the last record they did while their name is still End of a Year, and... Uh, a lot of what Self-Defense Family does now is a little left of center of hardcore. It's, it has its influences, but End of Year was much closer knitted to the hardcore scene. This is kind of a post-hardcore uh, sort of emo style record. I think it's a delivery, like a medicine delivery or something. Medicine, Amazon. My brain, my brain bulking, my brain bulking. Um, what is this, End of Year? End of a year, you're beneath me. Post hardcore, slightly emo adjacent, uh, but still, still fast, still melodic. Uh, hardcore record, very snarky, very witty lyrics. Um, just really good. If you, if you want some alternative thought hardcore, you're beneath me is uh, quite the record, especially with the opening track, composite character. All the other tracks are named after public figures, uh, but it's stories about Pat. Uh, Patrick Kinlan, the principal vocalist and songwriter, um, you know, his life and his observations and things, and he, he's he's one of the best hardcore vocalists that really paints a picture of whatever he's talking about in any given track. Um, as modern as we can get in this video, this release is from 2022. I talked about this on Instagram recently, and I thought it would be worthy to include in this video. This is High Viz with Blending. Uh, this is a British band. Uh, they kind of do it all. They do all the things I like. It's, you know, a hardcore punk record. It, it has some post-punk influence. It has some alternative rock influence. Uh, it's kind of just a really loud British alternative record. Um, but it has elements in all those things. They've really kind of nicely straddled the line of sort of the post-punk wave that has been coming out of the... British area in the last five, six years or so, but also uh, keeping their ties tight to the hardcore scene. They play with lots of hardcore bands all the time. But yeah, I mean, if you like British punk and British alternative, my favorite currently of the more punk leaning bands uh, coming out of that area of the world lately, uh, this record is so good. So many catchy songs, but just high energy. Um, just very, 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 very good. Listen to this one for yourself. Uh, big fan. High Viz Blending. Currently active. Uh, this is 2015-ish, I want to say. Maybe 2017. This is Judiciary with Surface Noise. Uh, Texas band, if you've been following the wave of great Texas hardcore metal bands coming out lately. Bands like Frozen Soul and Creeping Death. Uh, if you're a fan of Power Trip, uh, Texas band. You will heavily mess with this Judiciary record. Uh, this is on the more thrashy crossover side of hardcore. This is their debut full-length LP, Surface Noise. Uh, they have a second album called Flesh and Blood, which I do like. I just think this one is particularly a little more interesting and probably the one that most people would say is kind of uh, the modern classic of this band. Uh, but if you're familiar with Knocked Loose, there's a Knocked Loose vocal feature on this record, which is quite good. Uh, just hard, fast, takes influence from, you know, heavy hardcore as much as it does classic thrash metal. Um, quite good. If that's your scene, definitely give Judiciary a shot. Uh, this next one is kind of a personal essential. Um, it's, it has more of a cult following than I think it does a wide, rounded, um, scene appreciation, but... I really do want to talk about it because it was one of my cornerstone records, and I think 
for the time and for the label, this is absolutely a standout. Uh, this is a band called Lude Axe, A-C-T-S. There it is right there. This is their album, Black Eye Blues, which I believe might be their only full-length LP. It's possible they had a CD album that was never released on vinyl, um, but all the other Lude Axe stuff I have is on 7-inch. But this is the Black Eye Blues album from around 2009 on Death Wish Inc. Uh, really good hardcore with a bit of a sort of dark, bleak edge to it. Uh, in my very first Hardcore Essentials video, I talked about being blacklisted. If you like blacklisted, this is kind of in that realm. Just uh, dudes who have an understanding of the genre but are taking it in a little bit of a more forward-thinking, more emotional direction. Uh, it is so, so good. I've loved this record forever, and like I said, it was one of the first hardcore records that I ever heard when I was getting, or, you know, first really modern hardcore records I was getting into uh, when I was getting into the genre at the time, around 2009, 2010. Um, this is such, such a good album. Can't remember it enough, like I said. They kind of have a cult following. People who love this band love the hell out of them. Um, otherwise, people don't really know or care about it, but I'm a big fan, I wanna talk about it here. It's an essential to me. And like I said, within that couple year span, I'd say that's easily in the top, you know, 50 records from that time. Uh, moving on to just simply one of the best albums ever recorded, <laughs> The Promise with Believer. Uh, straight edge hardcore band, I wanna say Richmond, but I could be wrong. Uh, it is so good, this is their only LP. It is amazing. Uh, just proficient early 2000s straight edge hardcore being done at the most impeccable level that it can be done. Um, a very short lived band. They have this, they have a seven inch. Um, I have a couple splits that they're on. They kind of existed, you know, a little bit in the terror world, a little bit in the American Nightmare world, but closer to something I hope conspiracy or the suicide file. Um, really good rocking hardcore some of the best straight edge lyricism of the time as well. Uh, if I could recommend one single album from this entire lot, you know, the Bane record is kind of so, I mean, truly the essential of the essentials of Modern Hardcore Essentials in this video. So, I mean, if you haven't heard the Bane record, you should do that. But at my personal pick, if I was guiding you to only listen to one album from the stack, it would be uh, this album. It is so, so good. And that's all I can really say. Absolute classic. Uh, moving on to one of my favorite bands. This is Ringworm from Cleveland, Ohio, uh, in the Holy Terror Hardcore Persuasion with bands like Integrity and Cold Blood, Gehenna. Uh, this is the album Scars. This is a slight. Uh, is this considered mid period Ringworm now? I guess technically, because if Ringworm started in like 89 and they put out a record last year, and this is from 2011, I guess this technically counts as mid-period ringworm. I would maybe say this is kind of like the end of the mid-period ringworm. I believe this is the last record they did before they signed to Relapse. Uh, if I have the uh, chronology correct there, um, I really would have liked to have shown Justice Replaced by Revenge. Uh, which I think is the best of the Victory Records era of Ringworm. I don't have that on vinyl. That's an absolute grail for me to get on vinyl. But uh, that's an album I will have to talk about another day. But Scars, I would say, is just as good. Um, this has To the Grave, the title track Scars, got a Misfits cover on here. Uh, super hard. Ringworm does it all. They do hardcore, punk, crust, thrash. Uh, just extremely heavy, extremely aggressive band. The singer's name is Human Furnace. When you listen to this band, you will understand why. Uh, incredible band, seen them a handful of times. They always rip live. All their records are great. Uh, and if you are more of a metalhead of the hardcore punk persuasion and you haven't given Ringworm a shot yet, please do. This is not a bad place to start. This record, I think changed the lives of a lot of people. Uh, is very influential in its genre. It's not like, for me personally, it's not the most mind-blowing thing in the world, but every time I listen to it, it's just like, oh yeah, it is sometimes as good as this era of hardcore gets. Uh, and that is The Rival Mob. This is Mob Justice. Um, 
again, just a band that does hardcore, kind of strips it to its bare essentials, but plays it to its highest caliber. Um, I want to say this is their only full length and then they have a smattering of, of EPs. They don't have a ton of material out there. The Hardcore for Hardcore 7 Inch is amazing. This LP is so good. I've pretty much been listening to this since it came out in 2013. Um, it is quite good. Rival Mob, lean, they lean slightly in sort of the street punk inspired hardcore stuff. Uh, like if this band did a reunion show, it would go fucking crazy. Kids love the shout out of this band with good reason. This is an extremely important band, extremely important record. Um, yeah, this is another one that's a total genre classic from the last 15 years. So definitely give that one a shot. A couple more here, ending on the heavier side of things. Uh, this is Throwdown with Haymaker. Uh, this is from 2003 originally. Uh, Throwdown, who leans into the metalcore persuasion. Their first two records uh, are a bit more straightforward, straight-edge hardcore with some metal influence. This is the first record where they go heavy, heavy into the metal, metallic hardcore, metalcore, whatever you want to call it, influence. Uh, the type of metalcore that is very chugga chugga based some some almost new metal leaning parts to this album but although not as much as the records that would come after this when they kind of go full uh, new metal adjacent with some hardcore influence and i love all that stuff i love all the i love the whole throwdown catalog certainly uh look but yeah they have some more kind of alternative metal stuff that comes after this this i think is kind of a perfect mix of their straight edge stuff the straightforward hardcore stuff and the metal stuff uh, fantastic record. The song on here, which is called Declare Your War, is one of my all-time favorite hardcore songs. Um, the record is great. It's it's one of those kind of needlessly aggressive <laughs> albums. Uh, but if you liked, uh, I showed I talked about talked about a band called First Blood in one of my uh, other Modern Hardcore Essentials video. If you like that, if you like this, uh, Terror, Hate Breed, any of that stuff, give this Throwdown record a listen. It is great. And I know I just talked about this record recently in the Vinyl Finds, but it is absolutely a modern hardcore essential. Um, although, again, you know, there's hardcore influence in this, but I, this band is mostly really a metal band at its core. Uh, one of my favorite bands, Twitching Tongues. This is In Love, There Is No Law. This is the nice anniversary edition. Uh, this was originally released in, I believe, 2013, uh, if I remember correctly. And this is the 10-year anniversary edition uh twitching tongues is a band that you can tell exactly what all their influences are but they don't sound exactly like any of them uh whether it's life of agony or marauder or only living witness or Candlemass or type of negative or you know any of those types of bands uh hate breed sepultura um you can find those parts all over twitching tongue stuff but they really make their band, their own thing. It's it's kind of an acquired taste. Uh, n not everyone's gonna love it, but I would say if you love doom metal, if you love kind of gothic, especially the sort of gothic, romantic funeral side of doom metal, um, or you like just really good mosh parts from 90s metallic hardcore, uh, check out Twitching Tongues, In Love There Is No Law. Great record. If you like things very very heavy i would listen to their uh last album which is called uh gaining purpose through absolute hatred uh that was from 2017 2018 around there uh but this is kind of the widely accepted classic album from twitching tongues and i would have to agree so there are uh for now the last 10 modern hardcore essentials thank you as always for watching uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.